Hello, broads. What's going on, broads? Happy Thursday or whatever you're listening to this. Mm-hmm. What a Happy day. Happy week. Happy week. <laughs> hey, B, how have you been feeling with the pregnancy? I feel like we haven't touched base for a hot second. Dude, we haven't touched base about it because I don't feel pregnant. Really? I swear like, to God. Like physically, like mentally, emotionally, every, I, I, I spiritually. I forget I am pregnant. Like <laughs> really? I am not just saying that. Like I remember on New Year's, I was like, oh, sweet, it's New Year's. The baby's at a babysitter. Let's get turnt. And then I was like, I'm <laughs> like, oh, shit. pregnant. So I'm not going to do that. But it's like, I'm like in that frame of mind of not being mm. pregnant. And I'm for some, like on some days I'm kind of showing. And on some yeah, days I'm no, really not. You'll, you'll show up sometimes and I'll see you and I'll be like, oh, I see the little belly. And but then like I today you showed up and I'm like, I She's think it's literally anymore. from what I've eaten. Like, I think sometimes people are like, the belly's popping. I'm like, I think I actually ate something that's making me bloated. Or I'd imagine, too, like, I know since after having Ember, when I have, like, a big meal all of a sudden, my belly, like, remembers that it oh, can't yeah. expand. So, whoop, all of a sudden uh-huh. I'm like, what's going on with you? Like, didn't yeah, know. Surprise. I, I almost feel, though, like I'm... Uh, with this pregnancy, I'm almost showing later, like the opposite of what people have said. Cause I've kind of been cross-referencing photos and I don't know if I was pushing it out more, but I am 19 weeks, uh, on, on Thursday. So today when this is dropping, I'm 19 weeks. Oh so that's almost God. halfway there. That's crazy. That crazy. We're going to get the anatomy scan in like the next couple weeks. And I remember being at that point with Ruth, with my pregnancy with her. And I'm like, what? It's so Are wild. It's so there? wild how different pregnancies can be. Apparently, yeah. This one is just uh, night and day, but in a good way. Whatever. We're we're coasting along. I love it. I forget sometimes that you're pregnant too because you just, I don't know. You just it's, seem like you're coasting, like you said. You're doing your thing, and there's I mean, not any. I think there's something to be said for the second baby, especially and of so all, soon. Like so how much you're drinking. I know. <laughs> Yeah, it's easy to forget when I'm thrown back tequila shots with the girls. <laughs> yeah, it's like every weekend we're just outraging. It's crazy. I always forget. <laughs> no, no, no. It's a that. joke. It's a joke. Okay. Um, but speaking of babies. Yeah, we're going to talk. Yeah. We so, okay. So talk about when, more fertility stuff today. Yeah. When Becca initially announced our episode was thankful for new life, um, announced that you were pregnant, we decided to kind of talk about contraception, contraception and, all that kind of shit. and Becca and I discussed, um, how in the past, um, at certain points we had been on the pill, certain points we'd used the pullout method. Um, we talked a little bit about condoms, but I ended up getting an email from one of our bras and she was like hey girl I'm actually a fertility awareness uh, method expert and I would love to talk and I got so excited because this is something I know personally that I've like dabbled in a little bit but I have so many questions and I just think that it's really important to talk about uh, different options and this wasn't one that we touched on no and uh, I think there's a lot of misconceptions when it talks about when we people talk about fam the fertility awareness method and there's a lot i think people equate that with just like the pullout method right and i i don't i i'm pretty sure that's not what it is at all and i guess i still have a lot of questions too. me too and we're gonna find out yeah and i think that this is also a conversation not just for people who are interested in uh contraceptive information i believe also which we're gonna talk to our expert in a minute that uh for all people with um menstrual cycles and a uterus mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and any and you know hormones all that kind of thing it can be really valuable for people trying to uh get on top of what's going on in their bodies whether or not they're worried about not having kids having kids etc exactly i'm super excited so let's introduce our broad and expert today it's natalie Dudo, yes? Dode. Dode. I mixed it up. (laughs) (laughs) I just had asked. Uh, Hi, Hi. Natalie. Welcome. Thank you so much for reaching out. We so appreciate it. Yeah, I, I, it was such a long shot because I've listened to your podcast since the very beginning and I watched every season of The Bachelor. Um, so yeah, I've been like keeping up with you guys for a while and I was just listening to Becca talk about um, non-hormonal birth control and like all the options and I just was like, I'm just going to send you guys an email and just see what happens. And so I was really excited um, to so come and chat you with did. you because yeah, I feel like um, I know you guys a little bit just based on listening to the podcast. Oh, for um, sure. And yeah, so I'm really excited to chat. I'm excited too. I got a lot of DMs about uh, fam after the. Is that what you call it? I feel like I'm, I'm saying fam. Is that like <laughs> is that like a term that people use or not really? 
Yes. Yeah, it is. Okay. People use FAM, short for the Fertility Awareness Method. Um, you can also use FABM, so Fertility Awareness Based Methods is kind of like the technical term. Okay. But I just use FAM. So yeah, you're good. Okay, got it. <laughs> I, I yeah. got a lot of DMs about that. And so I think that uh, it's not on a lot of people's radars, but I think there are a lot of people who feel passionate about sharing. Yeah, it seems to be it. one of those things, at least in my path that I've come across, that like it's I've heard the word thrown out, but a lot of us don't know what it specifically actually means. Mm -hmm. And like Becca was saying, a lot of times people just associate it with the pullout method. Um, so do you mind giving us kind of like your background, what you do, how you got into it? Yeah, I'm really curious yeah. about how you got into yeah. how you got yeah. into what you're doing. Oh, um, yeah, no, it's such a good question because I feel like I've gotten to where I've gotten in such like a, a weird and circuitous way. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm based in Winnipeg in the center of Canada. Um, and I learned fertility awareness because I was looking for non-hormonal birth control. Um, and I wasn't happy with really any of the options that I was being given. So like even the diaphragm is really hard to get and, mm -hmm. um, I just, I just wasn't finding anything that was resonating with me that felt like it checked all the boxes for me. Um, so that was about four years ago. I was chatting with my doctor and she actually recommended looking into fertility awareness. Um, so I took a course with a Catholic group uh, in Winnipeg um, because we can get into this a little bit about the or origins of FAM, but there's a strong uh, Catholic association with fertility awareness. Oh, interesting. Um, yeah. So then I, I took the class and I was just like blown away. Like my mind was blown. I had not ever heard that I could track when I ovulated or that I, that I even ovulated. I didn't even know mm. any of that stuff. Um, so when I, when I learned it, I was just like, this is insane. Like this is blowing my mind. Um, so yeah, like I started trying my cycle, using it for birth control and then decided that I wanted to teach it to women, um, and people with uteruses. Um, and I wanted to teach people in Winnipeg. Um, so I took the course and then I slowly began to teach people I knew and then slowly began to teach people all over Canada and the U S and all over the world. So wow. I teach mainly online and then a little bit in person, but it's just the, the reach for fertility awareness, people who are interested is like global. Like there's a lot of people. <laughs> everyone interested in has, it. yeah. So yeah, everyone has uterus. uterus. There's a lot of us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so yeah, it's been a really interesting journey. I, I'm really passionate about like talking about birth control and just mm -hmm. like what we think of as birth control and how we can be safe, um, reproductive, you know, sexual humans, mm. uh, because we're told a lot of stories about, about what that means. And so I'm really passionate about like, just talking about that kind of stuff and educating people to chart their cycles, um, and learn about their fertility. When did you first yeah. take that class? So it was in February, it'll be four years ago. Okay. Yeah. So I've been charting my cycles for four years and using that for birth control. Um, and I love it. I would never choose anything else. Like it works really well for me. Um, and I've just grown like to meet other people who use it now too. And like with Instagram and, um, just like social media, you just connect to a whole bunch of other people who also use it as well. Do you mind if yeah. I asked, um, if I ask uh, how you were raised in the sense of like, was this something that your parents were communicative with you about, like about birth control? Was it kind of like a hush hush? That's a really good question. I feel like I was raised in a really like open, like accepting, um, like body positive uh, environment. Um, and I was never like explicitly told any messages about birth control. Um, I went to a religious high school, but I wasn't raised Christian. Um, so the, the religious beliefs were more from like my peers and my teachers than my family. Um, so, so yeah, I feel like I didn't have to really challenge a lot of those beliefs, like from my upbringing, um, which sure. I'm really lucky to, to have. Yeah. Do you mind me yeah. asking uh, why you were looking into non-hormonal contraceptive options in the first place? Yeah, um, I've always been someone who's like into natural things. <laughs> so I've always been someone who's into like, I don't know, like you alternative call me, options. Yeah, alternative. Yeah, like that kind of stuff. 
I I take an Advil if I need to, um, but I pretty much I'm skeptical of uh, medication unless it's really necessary. So when it came time to think about birth control, uh, we were using condoms, but something told me that I needed to be on birth control. Like that wasn't enough. Mm. Um, so so when I was looking into it, I just something just didn't feel right for me. And I know a lot of people are really happy on their methods of hormonal birth control. But for me, it just, it just didn't feel like something that I wanted to be on. Um, And now that I learned more about hormonal birth control and some of the risks and side effects, I think it's important to question and um, just find something that really, really works for you. Like to not, to not settle for something that doesn't feel quite right. So that's kind of what happened to me. I just kept searching until I found something that felt right. I think it's kind of scary too, because we're sort of in this new age of uh, fertility issues as well. And think in, or maybe talk, not that it's new, but we're talking about it openly in a way we haven't before. So I know that's a concern that a lot of women face too, is if I'm on this form of hormonal birth control for 10 plus years, if it's Mm -hmm, working for mm -hmm. me now, are there going to be any long-term effects moving forward when I do want to start a family? And I know that's really scary for some people. Yeah, it's so wild because so many teenagers will be put on the pill for heavy menstrual cycle or heavy Ac- periods. Acne. Mm-hmm. Acne, yes. I acne. was put on pretty early um, because I have a lot of ovarian cysts. So they put me on really young. And, um, you know, it, it did what it needed to do, but it did definitely like majorly mess with my cycles, um, which I would we'll talk about when we talk about, uh, uh, famine and and the importance of, uh, your cycle. But yeah, I mean, I was thinking about it now. I'm shocked at the age. I think I was maybe like 13 or 14 when I was put on it. I was was 15. I definitely wasn't sexually active until I was probably about 19. So it was a lot of years that, how old were you? Oh, I was 15. It was because of acne that it was suggested. That was like one of the first things that was suggested to me, uh, for acne treatment. Yeah, because I know, Becca, like you've had like your own skincare journey, like trying to find the root cause of what's going on, sure. right? And it's the same thing with birth control. When we go on the pill, it doesn't actually fix the root cause of sure. your acne, yeah. your regular cycles. I hear a lot of women with PCOS being prescribed the pill mm-hmm. um, as the only option. And so once you come off 10, 15 years later to have a kid, your cycles may not return exactly like you want them to they may not come back right away because the root cause of whatever you went on for hasn't been addressed um so it's it's really unfortunate that we aren't educated about this like if we were told at 15 you know like just so you know you're going on this now in 15 years when you want to get pregnant you may run into some issues so you might want to come off a little earlier so you can wait to see what happens when you actually want to get pregnant and even that um, is like uh so much for a 15 year old to oh sort of gosh, carry yes. you know at 15 you're like i just want my acne or my cyst to yes. get cysts, right my ovarian cysts to go away you know yeah but yeah, it definitely not, seems yeah. like it would bring like a new light to to almost like thinking about uh uh sexual activity like in a way where it's like there it is a responsibility to a certain extent so if you're thinking like this thoroughly about I mean obviously we're talking about kids going on for um for acne but even at that young of an age when we're having open conversations about um like through sex ed and you're talking about forms of birth control and talking about future planning I know if I'd be thinking that way when I was 15 I'd be like oh gosh, se- sex is, can be a lot. This is more than just like a moment sometimes, you know? I think a lot of parents don't know either. And I imagine like mm-hmm. as a mother, if, I mean, I, yeah, if I didn't know all those things and if then if I did know, I'd be like, wait, whoa, 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 maybe we should try some other options before this is, you know, what we're putting our teenagers on. Right. Yeah, no, it's... It's, it's a lot. And I think I don't like, I, I don't know if we should be telling teenagers right away, but maybe we should be telling women when they're wanting to conceive, um, having like a year off hormonal birth control before they actually start trying. Mm. Mm-hmm. Um, very, very few people are told to, to do that. And they're usually told that as soon as you come off, you're going to get pregnant, like right mm-hmm. away. Um, which happens for some people and for others, they have to wait like 
six months, 12 months and longer uh, before they actually conceive because their cycles are not, they haven't ovulated for however long when they've been on the pill. So their bodies have to remember how to do all that right. and how to get pregnant. That could cause so much more stress for a couple who's trying to conceive if they're like expecting right away to conceive and, and then that's not happening. That could make it even more difficult to conceive. I would exactly. imagine. Make it yeah. an unpleasant experience. Yeah. And so it's all about just like normalizing that like length of time that like it's okay if it takes longer because of what your body's um, experienced. Right. Yeah. Well, okay. I want to get into explaining exactly what yeah. fam is. Um, but before we do that, we do have to take a quick, quick pause. And speaking about uh, this fertility talk, can we chat for a minute about the bedroom? Yes. Uh, the counter. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever it is you prefer, <clears throat> Peter. But let's get real. Um, <laughs> Becky and I have talked about it sometimes. We've talked about how our sex life uh, can at certain times be simply unarousable and lagging. Life in general seems anticlimactic and... <laughs> A busy day, hormonal changes, or a low libido can make it hard to get things going when you need it most. The point is, every broad deserves to experience stronger, more frequent orgasms, but sometimes we just need a little boost to elevate us to the next level. This is where O-Shot by Omax comes in. Yeah, Love it. <laughs> O-Shot was developed by the awesome female-run team at Omax Health, and it's a luxurious arousal oil that instantly heightens your sensation and arousal with their all-natural blend, which I love, of eight botanicals and full-spectrum CBD. You just apply it to intimate areas to instantly experience erotic tingling and warming sensations, enhanced lubrication, and increased sensitivity for the ultimate climax and it's naturally delicious and fully edible because this formula is 100% pure with absolutely no chemicals. And for me, that means no burning sensations when using it. Nothing. Exactly. And I feel good about putting it inside my body. <laughs> exactly. Yes. We've talked about this both. I mean, we're both really, really sensitive. And typically I know for me, like lubes or arousal oils, they can irritate us. But O-Shot has been nothing but good to us. Um, like Becca was saying, it has all natural eight botanicals full spectrum CBD and its base is organic liquefied coconut oil, which uh, it helps improve lubrication. I love it. I take it with me everywhere and you truly can travel with it because of its no mess airless pump and its TSA compliant size. Mm -hmm. And whether you're single or you're looking to spice up your relationship with more satisfying sex, everyone, that's everyone, can benefit from a more enjoyable orgasmic experience. With Omax's O-Shot, comes to the rescue and provides heightened sexual sensations, which can give you the instant and long-lasting satisfaction you've been looking for, and it's 100% safe and natural. Remember, go to omaxhealth.com today and enter code CHATTY to take advantage of this incredible savings that we're going to offer you. That's omaxhealth.com and enter code chatty to get 20% off Oshot and all the Omax products on the site. And remember, oil-based lubes and arousal oils do not work with latex yeah, condoms. I wanted Hello. to say just that just want to make, make that clear <laughs> right now. Get that disclaimer as well. <laughs> love it, love it, love it. Obsessed. We don't but remember latex yes. condoms, uh, oil-based lube and arousal they are oil. Not, not a good combination. Yes. <clears throat> okay, but just thinking about Oshot is making me really hot and heavy. And you know what else makes me really hot and heavy? The real real shopping <laughs> shopping turns me mm -hmm. on uh, with the real real. You can own iconic luxury items at unreal value. They're the leading reseller of authenticated luxury consignment from top designers like Louis Vuitton, Gucci, Rolex, Cartier, and hundreds more up to 90% off retail people. 90 percent with the real real you can shop and consign women's and men's luxury fashion and streetwear as well as fine jewelry watches art and home goods they've got it all and new arrivals come in daily and just so you know every item undergoes the real reels me meticulous authentication process in fact the real real employs over 100 plus brand specialists gemologists horologists and art curators from around the globe who inspect thousands of items each day that make so you know that every item is authenticated. Yeah, and when you're dealing with luxury consignment, a lot of places don't thoroughly check to make sure that it's not a knockoff. Yeah. Uh, the Real World does an incredible thorough job. Uh, you can go on their website or download the app. I have spent hours browsing oh, the Real World. Girl, me too. <laughs> so many hours. It is so <sighs> good. And has nonstop new consignment coming in. Broads, 
just a little tip. If any of you are proposing to someone or getting proposed too soon, you should check out their diamond rings oh online. Oh my gosh, that's so smart. It is such a sustainable way. And I'm telling you, the deals that they have, I've seen these gorgeous rings for thousands of dollars less. That's so smart. Right? I'm like, I, sh- I kind of yes. want to trade, like, trade in my wedding ring. <laughs> go make some cash on the real world. Go I'm sell gonna it. I'm going to go make some cash. <laughs> um, you can also visit one of their stores in Soho or West Hollywood or their newest location at 870 Madison Avenue in New York. Their stores are gorgeous. I got a pair of thigh high Stuart Weitzman's yeah, off you did. of the real real. And yeah, I you did. Them. Uh, shop luxury the sustainable way. You can shop in store, online, or download the app and get twenty percent off select items with promo code real. I have used this promo code. It's awesome. That's the real real dot com <laughs> promo code real for twenty percent off select items. All right. So back to you, Natalie. Okay. Can you explain kind of the fundamentals of what FAM is? So yeah, there are, like I said, there's fertility awareness based methods. So there are different kinds of uh, fertility awareness. Um, The method that I teach is temperature and cervical mucus. So we call it the symptothermal method because it uses uh, two identi- like identifiers basically of your fertility. Um, so the basic idea is that you chart your fertility signs every day. Um, you chart your basal body temperature. So your core resting body temperature attained during rest. So you take it uh, before you get out of bed every morning Um, And then you chart that after you ovulate, your temperature rises slightly. And that's what we're measuring when we're tracking basal body temperature. Um, And then the second piece, yes. I just had a quick question before we're diving into these um, pieces. I don't know if you can speak to this, but maybe we could get into who that this method might be good for and like who might not be a great candidate for using this method. That is, yeah, question. that is a really good thing to talk about. Um, yeah. I don't know if I you, will, I don't I'll know if you want to address that after. Yeah. 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 I'll I just thought about it before quick, we get into it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think that's really important to talk about. I'm going to, yeah, I'll finish the quick rundown of what it exactly is. Um, and then the second piece of tracking is tracking your cervical mucus. So this piece might sound uh, gross. To some people, um, but it's like basically our discharge, our cervical fluid, our cervical mucus is super healthy and normal. Um, so I don't know if you guys grew up thinking that like your discharge was was weird or gross. Like I remember laughing with my friends about it, um, just thinking it was I don't know random, uh, but it's actually really not random it changes based on where we are in our cycle yeah I remember being young and being like girl why are you different it's three days ago you were this way and why are you look different this day like it was always like there was no rhyme or reason and sometimes I was like why is it so I mean sorry TMI everyone why is it so watery or like why is it so like sticky or yeah Yeah. or then like well why is there so much and then why is there nothing like I just was like wow and and I think you get it before you get your period so I remember that that would be a thing me and my friends would talk about where they'd be like, well, I don't remember what we called it. I think we just called it discharge. We'd be like, well, I have discharge now. I think we call it goop. Yeah. <laughs> now I that's remember. gross. <laughs> yeah. Or like you think, like you hear people who are pregnant talk about a mucus plug. Like that's oh, also yeah. how you talk about it. Yes, right? Yeah. And so like, I'd never heard of that until I started learning about fam. Yeah. I never heard um, about the mucus plug either. Yeah. And like not many people talk about it because mm-hmm. yeah. Um, but yeah, we have different types of mucus, uh, depending on where we are in our cycle. So our cervix creates these, basically we categorize it into two different types of mucus. Um, and then we chart that every day. So you don't have to stick your fingers inside to measure it. Uh, basically you're just checking it when you go to the bathroom and you wipe. Um, so what you're doing with that info is you are tracking it and you're identifying when in your cycle pregnancy is possible. So there's about five to seven days per cycle that we can actually conceive. The time is really, really short um, because the egg only lives for 24 hours. So we give ourselves 48 hours when we're charting with FAM just for like a safety barrier. um, And then five 
days that sperm can stay alive to fertilize the egg. Those damn wow. sperm. So, those damn sperm. Also, yeah. the five to seven day thing, by the way, seven days, a long time out of the month. I remember for some reason being taught growing up that like there were only two days that I could get pregnant. And so I remember being like two days that of your egg. Yeah. Exactly. And so I remember being like, Oh, two days. That's nothing. Like this is important. That's a lot of potential days that you could get pregnant. If you're not looking to get pregnant, like that's a, that's a good chunk of the month. It's so funny because so many people I talk to are like, when I was a teenager, I was told I could get pregnant anytime. Yes. <laughs> yes. 100%. One or the other. Right? Yes. 100%. So, that's yeah. That's what the, what I'm familiar with is a lot of people thinking like you can get pregnant on your period. You can get pregnant and like you can get pregnant anytime. You, you never know. Oh, and I thought I was like, yeah, no, I'm good to go. I'm never, <laughs> that. there's only like, there's only two hours in the whole month that I could. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so two opposite ends of the spectrum um so yeah basically with that info we're just making our decision decisions based on if we want to get pregnant or not in that period of time or like uh, magic i know that some younger people are like that too where they're just like well i don't know like i guess it's just just you, you never know if it's gonna happen or if it's not so you just cross your fingers and like hope you don't yeah, or you're like just lying beside your boyfriend and it just happens. You just get pregnant. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah. I have a question about um, you said there's two different types of mucus. Yes. Um, what is the difference between when you can get pregnant and when you can't? What, are those, what does that look like? For, yeah, so if you are wanting to get pregnant, basically the closer you are to ovulation, the more watery stretchy clear your mucus will be um so what as soon as you start seeing mucus the potential for pregnancy is there okay um because, oh as soon as you start seeing mucus uh, oh i didn't yeah. okay interesting yeah so there is mucus that is more fertile than other mucus but any all mucus is fertile so all mucus can keep sperm alive um mm. we yeah so ovulation is something that happens um it doesn't happen on the same day every cycle for every woman. It rarely happens on day 14. Um, we don't know when ovulation is going to happen ahead of time. We only know when it's going to happen, when it's happened after the fact. So that's why we track the basal body temperature. We know for sure it's happened. We count to make sure the egg is dead and gone, and then we can have unprotected sex and there's no potential for pregnancy because there's no egg to fertilize. Yeah, I think also um, before uh, after we go into like who this method might be good for and not, or maybe even before, I think we should talk about the basics of the structure of a cycle because unfortunately mm-hmm. I think that a lot of adult women don't really even have a concept of what's happening when we're menstruating or exact, or when we're ovulating and what, what about the in-between time? What about the other two? What are those other two stages? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I think you're so right. I think very few women know that um, they ovulate. They they don't they're not like super familiar with things outside of our period because we're not really taught like how mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that happens. Like we're taught to pay attention to our period because it's obvious we can't miss it. But there's so many other things that are happening the rest of the cycle that aren't your period. Um, so so, yeah, like ovulation happens once per cycle it doesn't happen on day 14. Um, we like oftentimes people will be tracking their cycle on an app. They'll say, Oh, my app is telling me that I'm going to ovulate on this day. We actually can't know that. Like that is an information that we can't, we cannot know that an app can't know that an algorithm can't know that. Um, it ovulation just happens when it happens. We can track and see kind of when it's approaching, when it's getting Mm -hmm. close. But we can only know after the fact. Well, maybe so, even you talked about days. I think we should even go to basics of what's day one of the cycle. Yeah. Yeah. So day one of your cycle is the first day of full bleeding. So the day that you need to use a menstrual cup or a tampon, not spotting, but full bleeding. Um, and then your cycle goes all the way up until the last day before your next period. Um, and the first kind of, so if we can break up the cycle into kind of four parts Um, and the days vary based on your own unique cycle but the first part so during menstruation 
um, we're obviously bleeding, um, and our body is getting ready to recruit an egg. So it's telling our ovaries to get an egg ready to ovulate in a couple of weeks. Um, after menstruation is the pre-ovulatory phase. I was just wondering, and why does menstruation happen? So once we get to the end, I'll go through, okay. and once we get to the end, it will make a little bit more sense. Okay. Um, so before ovulation, estrogen is rising in our body. So estrogen is our feel good hormone. It's like our sexy hormone. Um, it wants to make a baby. Um, and that hormone slowly rises to get the egg ready to be released at ovulation. So the more estrogen we have, the closer kind of we are to ovulation, estrogen peaks and the hormone luteinizing hormone releases the egg. So ovulation happens. It happens at any time it wants. So there's no rhyme or reason. We have like kind of a pattern um, for our own bodies, but it can change based on stress, travel, mm. illness. It can be delayed. And then once the egg is released, it lives for 24 hours. It could be a second egg release in the case of twins. So we give ourselves a, like a three-day window, basically, if we're avoiding pregnancy. Um, and then after ovulation, the hormone progesterone takes over. So that is our luteal phase is the phase from ovulation till our next period. Um, what happens is progesterone kind of maintains your, your lining. So your uterine lining at the end of your cycle, progesterone drops off that releases your lining and then you get your period. If there's no, so, yeah, if there's no conception, if there's no pregnancy. Yeah, yeah. 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 So it is this. Um, once you ovulate, it's a set time usually from like, so for me, it will usually be 14 days and every cycle, it will be 14 days from ovulation till my next period. Um, that varies from woman to woman, but we can kind of know like approximately when we're going to get our period based on when we ovulate. Okay. And so, so basically if I'm, I'm breaking this down properly, so what's happening is estrogen level. So you get your period. So but well, actually, I'm going to start with the, the egg. So basically, your estrogen levels are rising until the point that you drop an egg, at which point then there's this window where you could become pregnant mm -hmm. and the egg could be fertilized. And then in the next you know, two weeks or however long, your body's preparing a lining so that that egg can implant exactly. in the uterine yeah. wall. Yeah. And then if there's no egg implanted, then the lining of the wall is going to shed to start. And it's, and then that's your menstrual, that's your menstruation. And then that yep. cycle starts all over again. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, we can get pre like we can, so sperm can stay alive before we ovulate. So we can have sex before we ovulate sure. and get pregnant because that's actually the most likely time because sperm can stay alive for five days in cervical mucus mm -hmm. so men are per so persistent I, they just they, they never just keep hanging up. around it's like hello get out of here a long time <laughs> like it's a long time wow. yeah. i couldn't survive without food or water for five days and these sperm are out here doing it every month <laughs> the real, real troopers. Just so persistent. I know. So persistent. Yeah. Yeah. So we're not the issue. Like, exactly. The issue really here. Um, so what's happening yeah. when you're on a, a a pill contraceptive? How is that interrupting the cycle so that you don't get pregnant? That's a really great question. It depends on what you are on. So certain hormonal contraceptives have a combination of synthetic estrogen and progesterone and certain types are like, if you talk about like the mini pill, if you've ever heard of anyone say that, like that progesterone that's, only. Yeah. yeah. So it's okay. progesterone only. So the body is what I've, when I've heard it being explained, it's less that our body thinks it's pregnant and more that our body's in a state of menopause. So okay. nothing is happening hormonally. Like we're having a daily rise and fall of hormones because of the synthetic hormones that we're taking, but we're not having the cyclical like monthly rise and fall that facilitate ovulation um, and all those things. So would that basically be limiting estrogen levels a lot of the time so that they don't rise to the point that an egg will be released? Yeah, the the like yeah it's it's more like the way that i've heard it being described is that in a lot of cases so in combination estrogen and progesterone 
pills or IUDs, um, ovulation is being prevented. So in some cases, it could cause what's happening in your body to stop so that ovulation doesn't happen. In other forms of birth control, what's happening is your uterine lining is um, thinned out. So it's preventing implantation. I understand. Okay. 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 Yeah, and it also impacts cervical mucus. So we know that we need cervical mucus for sperm to survive. If that's being impacted by the pill, that's also a mechanism that's preventing pregnancy. So it's like either ovulation is being stopped or the combination of other things, depending on what type of birth control you're on. Okay, and then like with a copper IUD, that would be disrupting the uterine lining so that an egg can't implant, correct? It is. What it's doing is it's killing off sperm. Oh, so, yeah, copper is yeah. a sperm killer. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, so the copper somehow, it doesn't, it's it like, kills them. it's like a vampire garlic situation. <laughs> Except for when it yeah. doesn't. <laughs> exactly. I know, Except I know for a couple of yeah. sperm that have gotten past some copper IUDs, which mm-hmm. is, that's crazy. Yeah, so like a lot of, a lot of women who are looking for non-hormonal methods are looking for the copper IUD because it is, it's not hormonal. It doesn't affect ovulation. And you don't have but, to think about it. Yeah, you don't have to think about it. And then there are downsides to the copper IUD as well, just like any uh, method of, of birth control. But um, I always say it's just like it's a personal choice, right? Like we all know what we are okay giving and taking when it mm-hmm. comes to birth control, as long as we have all the options. Mm-hmm. Uh, I feel like we, it, yeah, it, it is such a personal thing. Certain things, like for me, I really would not love to have an IUD inserted. Like that would be like a no for me. Mm-hmm. Um, like things like that. Like we just have our own preferences of like what is okay for us. But I think it's so important. Like if people are on a method of birth control and they're experiencing side effects that aren't being taken seriously by their care providers to really um, like try to kind of look into what some of those side effects might be so that you can really advocate for your own health. Like, I think that's so important to have those concerns taken seriously because so often they aren't, um, yeah. with, with like a lot of the, like the smaller side effects, like loss of libido, like so many times I've heard people just being dismissed. Like that's just what happens, right. When right. you're on the birth control pill, but it doesn't have to be that way. Like we should still want to have sex. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Otherwise, what's what's the point? Exactly. In a way, (laughs) if you're trying to prevent pregnancy, you're like, well, now I don't want to have sex. So (laughs) don't really need this thing. But and then there are bodily rest. I mean, there are restrictions, too, with people's um, own reaction to synthetic hormones or like I get reactions, skin reactions to copper. And I'm like, "Mm, probably not a good idea to insert copper inside my uterus. Mm -hmm. If I'm getting reactions on my wrists when I wear copper bracelets, like that's not a good idea. So, you know, there's sometimes people don't really have those different options, you know, don't have those options physically or medically for whatever reason. Exactly. Okay, so I have to pause for one moment to talk about something that I've been diving into lately. So here's the deal. I'm not really a game person like video games. I've always been kind of about because I'm not really great at them and they're not normally my thing. But I have to be real with you. I recently discovered the app game called Best Fiends and I am all in. It's a casual game that anyone can play, but it's specifically made for adults. Um, Hi, the visuals on this game are amazing. The little main characters are the cutest little bugs that I'm obsessed with. And the bad guys are slugs, which considering Becca's fear of slugs, I know really resonates with her. Um, But playing this game has been a really fun way to pass the time while an engaging my brain and enjoying breathtaking visuals and a gripping story, which that was the one thing I always needed in a game was a good story and Best Fiends has it. So here's the tea. When we get a potential sponsor for our show, before we say yes, we check it out, make sure we support it, love it. So when I heard about this app game one, I was like, all right, cool, cool. Um, Not my thing, but I'm sure a bunch of people love it. Well, I downloaded it to check it out, and now I can't stop playing it, so I'm eating my words. Um, But honestly, it's been such a great thing because 
instead of those moments where I would normally be mindlessly flipping through Instagram or getting FOMO because of it, I'm actually engaging my brain with these great, exciting puzzles that Best Fiends provides. Uh, you can spend as much time or as little as little time as you'd like in this game. I'm currently on level 40. Thank you very much. I'm very impressed with myself. Um, and it doesn't require internet to play. It's great for traveling. You can play it anywhere, like a plane, subway, all the places. Listen, if myself, who is not a gamer, loves it and can play it well, I know you will all love it. It's a casual, fun, and cute game you can play whenever you feel like it. Engage your brain with fun puzzles and collect tons of cute characters. Trust me, with over a hundred million downloads, this five-star rated mobile puzzle game is a must-play. Listen, you don't need my endorsement. A hundred million downloads and five-star rated puzzle? My goodness. Download Best Fiends free on the Apple App Store or Google Play. That's friends without the R, Best Fiends. Download Best Fiends free on the Apple App Store or Google Play today. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, like um, fertility awareness, like any method of birth control, isn't for everybody. Mm -hmm. Um, The people who use FAM really love it. Um, And you have to really be willing to learn about your body and learn like be willing to just get to know your body um so that's kind of like the first thing like that throws people off um when they know that they have to be checking for cervical mucus and stuff like that so if that's not your thing then this method would not be great for you um there is a misconception about fertility awareness that you need to abstain from sex during your fertile window and that comes from the catholic natural family planning okay uh, belief. So Catholic, I really am not familiar with like all of the like religious things around it, but basically a lot of Catholics use nat- nat- natural family planning, um, to keep following the rules, um, and not get pregnant basically is how I understand it. So it's like a method of birth control where like, um, you're not having sex where p- pregnancy is possible and stopping the potential for new life, I guess. Yes. Cause um, I, I believe that for maybe in strict Catholicism, I think that's ex- what you're talking about. You're not supposed to be preventing life when it's possible, which also includes exactly. pulling out and condom usage and like other and the pill and all and those things. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Right. 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 Yeah. So, so yeah, that was kind of like the origins of where we are now. Um, so a lot of people still think like when you say, oh, I'm using fertility awareness, they'll be like, oh, so you're not having sex like for a week, (laughs) right. Or whatever, however long, like a week or however long it is for you. Or like, oh, my mom used that and got pregnant or like my grandma used that and got (laughs) pregnant. Um, I've heard that so many times. Um, but it's not the same as Catholic natural family planning. There are similarities, but you can use um, other methods during your fertile window that don't involve unprotected sex. So we talk about the pull-out method. The pull-out method is really effective um, if you if your partner urinates before having sex, um, and if they ejaculate far away from your vagina, and um, probably nowhere okay. near the point of ejaculation <laughs> okay. as well. So. Yeah. You just mentioned urinating, your partner urinating before having sex. Okay. This is something, this is something that, um, you messaged me. And then I think two, two or three other people messaged me because we discussed this in our last episode and trying to figure out like, how do you sometimes get pregnant when you feel like you use the pullout method correctly? And I had never heard that the partner needed to urinate before having sex. So So that, yeah, that is part of it. We can't like, okay, we can't like 100% say that withdrawal or the pull method is effective because there is the possibility that pre-cum contains sperm. Right. There has not not been enough studies done, unfortunately. It would be really great if there were. Some people will take, okay, this will sound a little crazy, but some people will take their partner's pre-cum look under a microscope to see if there are sperm. That's sick. I mean, like, that's tight. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. Yeah, we love, it. We that's love a good research, Wait. Brad. Well, because I, I did... No, I really. did, I did um, wow. read research, and it was saying that basically, like, 
the one thing that they did find out from the limited study that they did is that men either have pr- uh, sperm in their pre-cum or don't. Like, oh, cer- like okay. certain men don't have sperm in their pre-cum and some do. Okay, so that's what you're saying. So the partner then, like if Evan were, if I were to take his pre-cum and put on a little slide and do and, my little microscope and business and it didn't have sperm in it, then I know then that he's, he. wow, you're I fine for the no pull-out idea. method. Which considering yeah. that you, you used it for four years or whatever, then I think and it's it, probably a fair assumption that he doesn't he probably have doesn't have pre-cum. sperm in his pre-cum yeah yeah so that's, oh, that's, 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 that's interesting no that's fascinating Wait, could yeah. you actually People could you it. literally really like you could actually you get could a microscope order one online yes you could order one online okay stay tuned or like at your college <laughs> <laughs> you're just like oh, i'm gonna to borrow one of these would have to be enough i don't know the number i don't know how magnified it would need to be but it'd be need to be enough that you could actually like see swimmers Do you, i wonder if you could go there. to a fertility clinic and like have them yeah like assess that stay tuned Probably. for our next youtube video where becca and i <laughs> check Grayson Grayson and Evan's Evan's Evans Evans for sperm. Pre-cum. Wait, with, with our little lab coats and microscopes it will not be monetized there will be no ads because nobody's gonna want to have a part of that <laughs> Uh, that's fascinating wow i had no idea that's so fascinating yeah. basically you see swimmers so, yeah. or you don't is that what that kind of is like if you see things moving yeah. then you know i think i've never done it this is all things that i've heard other people do this is gonna be and my like, new hobby <laughs> i would be like you need yeah, to find out if your boyfriend can get you pregnant with the pull out method i'm gonna need some of that pre-cum <laughs> on, a, <laughs> on a microscope slide wow interesting okay um, so sorry to interrupt i just i had yes, to continue. hear about that continue. for a second okay no yeah, I don't even remember where I was. Where was I? Uh, you were talking yeah, about so, like the yeah method barrier yeah. methods. So yeah, window. you don't like you don't have to abstain when you're fertile if you don't want to get pregnant. So you can use condoms, pull out uh, or withdrawal. Some people call it. Um, people use like diaphragms. We talk about alternative sex, so not all sex is penis and vagina sex Mm -hmm. um and you can combine so like whatever you use in that time that's how effective fam is going to be for you because that's sex week there you go you can just have oral sex week for the month whatever works no 69 (laughs) 69 week of the month i'm sure your partner will love it and you'll have no risk of getting pregnant i actually really love that idea yeah that's cool but it's like once you have the information you like, you know, okay, so you're, you're thinking to yourself, like, I don't want to get pregnant. I know that today my risk of pregnancy is this. I know based on all these signs that I'm tracking, I have a really good idea of how possible it is. And then you make your decisions based on that. So it doesn't feel like this restrictive, like, burden of, like, needing to use a condom or not. It's very empowering because you're like, wow, I really know where I am in my cycle. I know like there's this other time of the cycle where I don't have to worry about this at all. And you really just kind of like, you just kind of flow with it. Like it doesn't feel like this burden, I guess, is Mm -hmm. what I'm trying to say. Um, But that being said, like your partner does need to be on board. So this works best in relationships where things are consensual, things are um, being communicated, right? Mm -hmm. Like if, if your partner isn't wanting to use a condom, you know your pregnancy like pregnancy is possible and you don't want to get pregnant that would be an issue um or you you don't have a super good relationship with this person you're not able to communicate that it might not be the greatest it also doesn't protect against stis because there are times in the cycle where you aren't using protection um there it's yeah so people can use this method with the regular cycles it's really possible um if you have a long, long cycle, it means that ovulation is being delayed. You're still tracking ovulation. Um, and being able to track your cycle means that you can get to the root of what might be going on for your irregular cycles. Um, so it still works with longer cycles, irregular cycles. You actually will have more insight as to what's going on. Um and then yeah. I, I guess also another limitation is you want to make sure that you can commit to it because if you're going to be having unprotected sex during the month, you want to make sure that you're tracking your temperature. Yeah. I'm guessing every day, checking your cervical yeah. muc- mucus uh, regularly. Otherwise, you, it's not going to be yeah. very effective. You can't half-ass it. Like you, can, yeah. you can't half-ass it because you'll miss information, right? Like you, yeah. Um, it also, it takes, 
like we usually say about three cycles of charting before you can rely on it for birth control. That makes sense. So that is another thing to keep in mind. You want to ideally work with an instructor who can help you identify that you have everything marked correctly. Mm. So FAM is super, super effective um, when you're working with somebody or just getting someone to check your charts and just say like, hey, is this all marked correctly? Um, that really helps with confidence and also increasing effectiveness. So like effectiveness is is really in your own hands. Like you're you're in control of um, of everything. Whereas when you're on the pill, um, you wouldn't know necessarily if you had ovulated that month, you had taken your pill at the wrong time, and you have, well, you would have no idea that mm. that was possible. Whereas with FAM, you have a really good idea what your risk level is every day if you're charting every day. And I imagine when you decide you want to start conceiving. You've got so much data at your fingertips that it's going to make yes. that journey incredibly smooth. Yeah, it's hopefully. like, yeah. You, it's so cool just even hearing you talk about it. The idea of being so daily in tune with your body is kind of the thing that's like exciting to me. Like, I know, you know, like I said, I've, I've know a little bit about fam and it's been like when I have used it, it was a very like a half ass situation. But the idea of like dedicating to every day checking in basically on your body seems like it would even just be a good like meditative practice. Um, I, a few years ago read, are you familiar with the book girl code, Natalie or woman code, woman code? Yes. That is a really good book. Yeah. So I read it yeah. a few years ago and it just introduced this idea of more than just your m menstruation basically yes. and open yes. my eyes to the different parts of my cycle. But beyond just talking about fertility and all that sort of thing, uh, the author, it's, it's a great book. Um, the author really opened my eyes to how physically and emotionally like your hormones are going to manifest, manifest at certain times of the month. And I think that that's really powerful too, because for example, after I read the book, I wasn't, um, tracking my temperature, but I was tracking for about a year, my cervical fluid and just even checking in on my app and like marking my menstruation. And when I thought I was ovulating based on cervical fluid, all that sort of thing. And, um, it was really helpful because there were things like um, I was working out a lot at that time and I never understood last week I was able to do this fucking thing. And then this week I, I can't and I'm just like dragging my ass around everywhere. Why is that? And then when I started tracking my cycle, mm. I was like, this makes sense because now I'm at, you know, the luteal phase. And because of that, this is how it's going to be manifesting my body. This is why I have more energy or why I have less energy. Maybe this week because I'm at this phase of my cycle I should just do yoga and just take it easy oh this is the week during my cycle where like things are you know I've got lots of energy so this is when I'm going to plan to get things done like it really aligned certain areas of my life or even just emotionally instead of me feeling like I was just off my rocker for mm -hmm. certain times of the month with no real wherewithal like instead I was able to be like well that's because I'm in this phase and so that makes sense yeah. and guess what yeah. it's going to pass in four to five days and it just mm -hmm. like really enhanced my life at the time when I was kind of paying attention because it just explained a lot of things and made me feel much more comfortable in my body and in my personal life mm -hmm. that for reasons way outside sex Yes, it is so like once you start diving into some of this stuff, it is like, so yeah, you can use fam just like for birth control or getting pregnant. But like you said, Jess, once you start paying attention and tuning into like the cycle day you're on, mm -hmm. like your relationships, your the way you work, the way you work out. Uh, the way you have sex, all of these things are influenced by where we are in our cycle and what feels good to us at certain times. Um, like I know for me, I've struggled with like the premenstrual phase of mm -hmm. my cycle quite a bit. Like it's always a challenge for me to, you know, I feel really judgmental. I feel really irritable. Um, like I'm on day seven right now. So I am in my pre ovulatory phase and I'm able to use like the energy that I have to, to like prioritize different projects and work that I want to do now. Whereas in my premenstrual phase, I know to tell my partner that I'm in that phase. So he knows, I know to like try to not like overwork myself mm. or be like doing a lot of like really outward, like extroverted things during that time. Because I know for me, my energy is a lot lower mm -hmm. and it's not bad. It's just knowing where we are can help us like really optimize and like work 
better with the people around us. And like give ourselves grace too. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Cause it's, yeah. It's crazy. Cause it's like one of those things where I know when I'm not tracking and it literally happens to me so often. I'm embarrassed to say that I, I'll have these like a couple days where I'm just like, Evan, I don't even know if I want to be married. I'm a horrible mother. And I have these like very in like intense emotions. And then my period starts. And I literally, yes. every time, every time it happens, I go, ah, okay, that's why. Cause then I'm totally back to, I feel completely back to normal again, but it's, it's one of those things that because I'm not great about constantly tracking, it takes me by surprise every time. And I'll question myself and be like, do I even want to do this with my life anymore? And then my period starts and I'm like, oh, okay, back to normal. We're good. That's such a good Everything point. Makes sense. Yeah. 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 Yes. yeah. So it's really, Yeah. I can't remember what I was going to say, but yeah, it, it's really empowering to like have that information. And then also, this is what I was going to say, being able to plan ahead. So like once I, once I start cycle day one, I will write in my journal or like I'll write in my agenda day one to 30 or however long my cycle is. And I will know in two weeks when I'm scheduling something, I'll know what day of my cycle I'm on. I'll know cool. what to plan during that time. I, I know when I'm going to get my period once I ovulate so I can plan my life around it. Mm. And it just makes things so much easier, like so much easier that having that information, I didn't have it before. And I just felt completely in the dark. Oh, yeah. yeah. The idea of yeah. like, like you were saying about not overbooking yourself on a certain week. Like, that's such a great tip. Oh, or my like, God. I'm going to get a massage. Like, yeah, exactly. On this yeah. Day or like gonna, my premenstrual yeah. Maybe face. if I have an option to not have that huge meeting that week, I'll make sure that I schedule it on this week instead of that week. Because I know yeah. I'm going to be maybe a little more emotional. And I don't know if I, yeah, you know. Or like here I'm pre-ovulating and I am going to go to that business meeting because yes. I am going to charm the pants <laughs> off all I, those people I'm and get my money, you know, or whatever. sexual queen right now. I'm going to get all yes. of mine. <laughs> yeah, like, wow. yeah. That's actually yeah. what that book Woman Code talks a lot about. She talks a lot about like enhancing your life and like your your career and all these things by like being on top of your fertility. It's pretty interesting. It's amazing because I feel like <clears throat> at least I know for me growing up, um, the idea of like our cycle was so like, oh, it sucks. Us poor, us poor like women or poor people with uteruses, we have to have this horrible cycle. But like when you talk about certain things and the idea of like how complex and incredible our bodies are, it's like, no, this is unbelievable. And we have such a like dynamic month that's happening with our bodies that we're able to really like optimize at certain points and then like really self care at certain points. If we do it correctly, yes. that's so yes. cool. Um, uh, I also think something interesting as we were talking about this, uh, and I don't want to talk about like, um, a menstrual cycle or having a cycle in terms of being feminine, like, you know, or a, like woman identifying. But I think when we talk about energies in the world, like feminine versus masculine and talking about the ways in which, you know, cause we have a mix of each in us and the way we do things. I think that way that we're talking about moving about the world and sort of planning and charting and scheduling in time for rest and all that sort of thing is like a very feminine way of moving about a world that's very masculine you know, in the sense of our yeah. culture is all about like, go, 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 be productive 100% of the time. And if you're not, something's off. But instead, embracing these moments of ebbs and flows throughout every single month is really beautiful. Yeah. And building yeah. in time to take care of yourself Absolutely. Um, according to what your body needs, that's pretty powerful. And it's like brings a yeah. different energy to like the, I think what we're conditioned to, how we're conditioned to work and, and maintain our time throughout the weeks and months. Yeah, seriously. Uh, so what does this look like practically is what I'm curious about. Like, so how, like, yeah. like let's talk like day one of starting yeah. fam. What do you like, what tools do you need? Um, do yeah. you personally use apps or like physical chart? What are like the things mm -hmm. you need to get started resources for someone wanting to start? Like, let's say Jess and I are ready right now and we know nothing except listening to this podcast. We're ready to fam it up. <laughs> fam time. <laughs> or fabum. <laughs> I think that was the other one. Yeah. F-A-B-M. Fabum. Yeah. Um, do you both chart your cycles at all on an app? Yeah, I do. 
or when Are I'm you not pregnant. With any apps? Do you know like which app do you use? I've used both a uh, combination of Ava and Kendara. Okay. So I've yeah. Used Ava, yeah. Ava, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um Kendara is the app that I recommend Kendara. for for charting for fam because um you can chart both your cervical mucus and your temperature as well as you can track all those other signs. So I think it's really cool um to pay attention to like those four so there are four phases basically of your cycle that you can pay attention to like emotionally physically all that kind of stuff and you can track that in your chart as well so you can kind of do both okay um and then yeah so i recommend kindara another app is avu view um and then there's a there's a new app coming out very soon called read your body so those are kind of the three there's also fertility friend there's lots of apps um, I just recommend people turn off their app prediction. So don't listen to the app when okay. it's telling you when you're going to ovulate. Oh, because okay. it's not when it pops up yeah. and it's just like, hi, sure. you're ovulating. Sure. Like, okay. No. Okay. You're and like, then, no, I know better than that. <laughs> and I'm just looking at the app right now for listeners. I'm looking at the Kendara app and it's pretty cool. The layout of it, because you can look up, you can type in your temperature for each day and then the cervical mucus options. It has sticky, creamy, egg white, watery you can also chart yes. like exactly what sec kind of sex you've had whether you use protected unprotected or withdrawal light medium heavy menstruation spotting like it's pretty even in a journal <sighs> section so you can like so get thorough. all the data for each day and i like how it gives you options like for the types of mucus and menstruation yeah. and all that it's cool yeah there's so much you can track um yeah like if you're wanting to use fan for birth control i mean i'm a fertility awareness instructor so I always recommend people learn from an instructor, especially if they're wanting to avoid pregnancy, because Mm -hmm. that is where um, you see risky sex in people's Mm -hmm. menstrual or in the people's charts is when they haven't worked with an instructor. Um, But there's also a ton of resources that you can learn the rules of the method. There's taking charge of your fertility that will teach you the rules for the method. So, um, so you're going to want, yeah, so you can track in an app, you can track on paper as well, if that's, something that you want to do um you for thermometers you're going to be using a basal body thermometer so it's not the same as a fever thermometer um and it will go to two decimal places um there are there are wearable thermometers that you can buy that you don't have to wake up at the same time every day to take your temperature like ava yeah so yeah ava takes your wrist uh temperature which isn't accurate enough for avoiding pregnancy oh okay so that's only for people trying to conceive yeah there's it's great for conceiving um we don't recommend ava for avoiding pregnancy there's something called temp drop which is really great for um if you want to avoid pregnancy and have a wearable thermometer temp Um, drop yeah temp drop uh but you can get a thermometer at your drugstore as long as it goes to two decimal places they are like ten dollars they range from like ten dollars to like two hundred dollars based on where you are at like how much you're going to use fam that kind of stuff um and like even the ten dollar ones are going to be pretty accurate as long as they go to the okay yeah, you can get them online. You can find them at a lot of drugstores as long as they're two decimal places. Um, and then when you take your temperature, you're going to want to take it. You can take it in your mouth. Some people do take it vaginally, but you can take it in your mouth um, as long as it's the same time every day before you get out of bed. Okay. So you're wanting like your resting body temperature. You're not wanting it like after you've gotten up and gone pee. You need to take it at the same time every day. Um, you don't have to take it on your period. Like you don't have to take it every single day. If you miss a day, it's totally fine. If okay. you don't take it on your period, it's fine. I'm a really la- like I hate to say this because I teach fam, but I'm a really lazy <laughs> with <fam> the temperature. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it once you get into it, you you don't have to take it every day. But and you know what's important when to, when it's know, important to take it. Okay. You know when it's important exactly. You know when it's important to take it. Um, and then, yeah, you're going to chart that, um, you're going to learn. Yeah. So you learn to chart your cervical mucus. Basically we categorize it into dry. So nothing, no, no cervical mucus, non-peak. So that's, um, cervical mucus that is creamy, lotiony, opaque. It doesn't stretch at like more than an inch. So it's like under an inch. I know Um, exactly what you're talking about when you're talking about this, Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So yeah, that is like, that's technically non-peak and then peak, which is what I talked about before, which is stretchy. 
kind of like raw egg whites. It's clear. That is like the most sperm friendly uh, cervical mucus, but all cervical mucus has the potential to keep sperm alive. Mm, I always uh, find that feeling, you know, when you're like, I think I just started my period. Like that feeling, I've uh-huh. always found that. I th- what? Or like when you actually start your period? No, when, when I don't. When it feels, yeah, I've, I've figured out that that's for me very like tangibly linked to ovulation. Yeah. Where for me, yeah. it's like yeah. it's a very like you feel that physical drop. feeling where <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I, why do I feel like I just started my period? That was very wet all at once. Totally. You know, I'm like, oh, I must be around my ovule. Like, like ovule. you run to the bathroom every time to check, yes. but you know it's really not. Yes. You're like, I know it's not. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So that would be like your peak type mucus. That'd be like super fertile. If you wanted to get pregnant, you would probably have sex on that day. I actually Um, had that when I got pregnant with Ruth because I knew that we hadn't pulled out and I still to this day don't know why we didn't use like emergency contraceptive. Still can't explain that. That's a whole different conversation. But I remember that I had that feeling the next day after we had sex and I was like, hmm. I hmm. think that's me ovulating, perhaps. <laughs> and I believe it was because now we have a baby. <laughs> and, yeah, that was history. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, and then you'll want to pick like a method of fertility awareness that works for you. So, there are so many different kinds. I was trained in a certain method, um, and you want to find something that works for you so that you learn the rules for avoiding pregnancy. So, you're going to want to sit- wait a certain amount of days after your temperature shifts and you're going to want to cert- wait a certain amount of days after you notice the most fertile peak type cervical mucus and then there are rules for the beginning of your cycle so before ovulation there's going to be certain days at the beginning where you're safe for unprotected sex and that will be based on whatever method um you pick basically mm-hmm. do you yeah. recommend uh couples taking a like uh, with an instructor because I'm thinking about this now and I'm like if we were to move yes. forward with this method I'd probably want Grayson to take this with me. oh my goodness yes mm-hmm. I get so many people asking like how do I get my boyfriend to trust fam yeah. yeah right like it seems so counterintuitive that you can have unprotected sex and not get pregnant that men usually are a little bit skeptical right? sure. also not wanting to get <laughs> okay <pregnant>. bitch <laughs> yeah. I see what you're <laughs> doing <laughs> Yeah, totally. Are you sure you got this. Yeah. Sure you know what you're talking about. Exactly. Um, so yeah, like my boyfriend took the course with me when we first started, and that was so helpful. Like That's he, great. like he trusts it. Like I teach it now, so obviously, like he knows I know what I'm talking about. But he he talks about it like it it's common sense. Like once you understand how it works, it's not like it's not like this weird like like you know, like abstract rocket science type thing. Right. It's very like common sense. And to men, oftentimes it, once they understand how it works, they're like, oh yeah, like I get this. Like this makes sense. Like I know that certain times in your cycle, you can't get pregnant because there's no egg to fertilize. Right. Yes. And so if men can take a course with you or like you can send them articles or however they like to learn, that can be super helpful in helping them trust fam. Um, And then when people are learning, I generally like to just like tell them, you know, when you're starting, even you've charted your three cycles, you're working with an instructor, wait until like the very last couple days of your cycle before you get your period to have unprotected sex. So you can kind of know that a couple days later, you're going to get your period. Like you start trusting it. Yeah. Um, And there's ways to kind of help with that too. Yeah. I think that that's so neat because first of all, I feel like if my, if Evan were to take it with me, he would be one to help remind me, like make sure to take your yes. temperature before totally. you get out of bed. But also I would imagine a, a couple who potentially wants to have children together in the future. Like what a great practice to have your partner already like really involved in your cycle, knowing about your body, um, yeah. commenting on your mood, exactly. even when you may not <laughs> normally like it, be like, make a note right you seem pretty irritable like the, today. but like they yeah exactly and they but they understand your body so i would mm. imagine a partner then would be more empathetic and in tune when you are pregnant because i know yes. like when i did get pregnant evan did not ne- necessarily know a ton about this so it took some headbutting between the two of us for me to be like understand my body and like trying to you know get him to to connect with certain things but if your partner's doing that all along i would imagine it would just be a seamless transition 
Yeah, it's yeah, it's super cool when like men can just like start to understand what we're kind of going through and like help to have like a, like grace for ourselves, but like they can have some grace for mm-hmm. us too. Right. Um, right? Like in certain times of your cycle where things are a little bit harder, um, it's not you, it's like what cycle day I'm on. It's not to like to like say that women aren't responsible for like how they act, but it it does have something to do with like hormones. And our bodies, and it's it's a really like it is a really beautiful thing. I think I know someone yeah. whose partner has like he charts her cycle too. Stop! Yes, <laughs> I'm so turned on. <laughs> oh my god! Or he's got like he's like let's compare notes. <laughs> That's oh amazing. Yeah. I love that. That's yeah. amazing. I love, when, like, I love when partners are involved because it's like why shouldn't you know about like what what's going on you're putting right? your like, penis yeah. in there you yes. should know what's going on <laughs> yeah you're getting yeah. all up in there help me out here bud <laughs> um yeah. okay well i want to hear um in a moment about um why it's important to just be ovulating in general as someone with a uterus um mm. but before we get into that um you know, we're talking about fertility and the changes that can come along with that or struggles or even further thinking about the challenges of parenting in the future or dealing with parents. We all have struggles. And I think it's so imperative that we regularly talk to a therapist. Um, but let's be real. Therapists can cost so much money and require really specific appointment times. But thanks to Talkspace, that has been solved. Talkspace is the most convenient and affordable way to get the support of a licensed therapist. You just go online, match with one of over 5,000 licensed therapist therapists and start messaging your therapist on day one a therapist that's suited to your needs and preferences and you can reach your therapist anytime anywhere all from the privacy of your phone or your computer and you can start messaging with your therapist the very same day via text audio pictures video whatever works for you and you'll have the dedicated support system you need to achieve your goals one step at a time It's like a personal trainer, but it's for your life. And you never have to go to an office or schedule or cancel and reschedule appointments like I do over and over (laughs) and over again. Well, I've gone to so, um, so much therapy. I've been doing therapy most of my adult and teenage life. And I can say with confidence, there have been so many times when I felt like I need to talk to my therapist right now and I was unable to because I was two weeks out from an appointment with Talkspace you can contact them whenever you need to and also sometimes you don't have the option to go in for an office appointment because Mm -hmm. of work or kids or you just don't have like the emotional capacity to leave your house that day or the budget yeah exactly Talkspace eliminates that problem they have over 5,000 therapists trained in over 40 specialties you can learn stress management communication skills behavior hacks and useful tips to help achieve your goals and it is so much more affordable Affordable. Start 2020 off strong with Talkspace. It's the, the support you need to help achieve your goals at a price you can afford. And you can get $100 off your first month when you use code chatty when you sign up. Don't wait for another year to go by. Quit putting it off saying you're going to do it some other time no matter what 2019 was like set yourself up for success in 2020 you can match with your perfect therapist today at talkspace.com or download the mobile app and don't forget to use code chatty for 100 dollars off your first month that's talkspace.com promo code chatty Speaking of something that is good for your heart, I am super excited to talk to you about one of our new sponsors that I absolutely oh, love. Too. It's Love Book. It's the most thoughtful personal gift ever. Um, it is a website that you can go on and create your own custom book. Love Books help customers express the sentiments that may be difficult to say out loud. And like I said, each book is completely customizable, but most customers use them to list the reasons why they love someone. It is the cutest gift ever. So cute. Users can create characters that look just like themselves and the recipient down to the outfits and accessories. And while customers have the option to personalize each page as much as they like, Lovebook uh, Lovebook's Express option creates a complete book with just a few clicks and love books are the perfect gift for Valentine's Day we know it's coming up soon I got one for my mom for Christmas yes. with Ruth so, yeah. and, and I did that with Ember too yeah it was um, just as idea it was, well I, I did it with Ember I was like Becca you have to try this it's so, so cute because Ember and I were actually able to make the love book together for my mom um, and Ember gave it to her and we called it Super Mimi and that Ember is so <laughs> it cute. was so cute and Ember sat with me and told me all the reasons why she loves her Mimi and we put them in the book and my mom 
mom flipped. She loved it so much. Um, and Ember and I made it together and made the characters look just like my mom and Ember. And it's actually kind of crazy how much you can customize them where they looked exactly like Ember and my mom. Um, but honestly, I'm normally so bad with design and online technological stuff, but love book has it streamlined and makes it so easy. Uh, you can make it as custom as you want super simply. And I truly think that it's one of the most special gifts that you can give someone. Um, and yeah, so perfect with Valentine's day coming up. Love book even offers a membership program now. So you'll save immediately on your purchase today and you'll also receive 50% off any future purchases and trust after you give this gift to someone and see how much they love it. You'll want to keep giving them as Mm -hmm. gifts, no matter who the person is. There's, there's options for everyone. It's not just like a romantic or a grandma. Yeah, You can give it to the person who has everything. Yes. You know, or even as like a special thank you gift. Anyway, so many options. Yeah. It's so ideal for that special someone that really deserves a meaningful present. And you can visit lovebookonline.com slash chatty to receive a special 20% off discount for our listeners. That's lovebookonline.com slash chatty to receive a special 20% discount for our listeners only. Okay, so Natalie, I know that um, something that you're super passionate about is the idea of that it's like so important to be ovulating. Can you can you touch on that? Mm-hmm. I think like so often we only think of our fertility when it comes to getting pregnant. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, it's really only when people can't get pregnant that they start thinking about like how all of this works. Yeah. Um, so we talked about how it's so important for like understanding your moods and understanding how you feel from day to day um and when we are ovulating when we're cycling naturally um there are you know like hormone receptors on like everywhere in our body not just our reproductive organs so the benefits of hormones like estrogen and progesterone aren't limited to ovulation and menstruation Mm -hmm. Um, they're beneficial for our whole being. So Mm -hmm. uh, when we ovulate, we're producing naturally these hormones that are really important um, that protect our brains and they help us feel um, relaxed. They reduce anxiety. Mm -hmm. They um, maintain our bone cells. Um, There's certain times in your cycle, for example, where working out it will help you like build muscle more because of the presence of estrogen. So these hormones help us build all kinds of cells. Um, And I think like, it's just really important to not take it for granted. Like it's, it's not something to like, we can't see it happening. So it's not important. It's really important for like our whole body functioning. And we see hormone imbalances in, in when we're charting our cycles, we see hormone imbalances that come through our menstrual cycle. So Mm. we see things that, that are, um, you know, like irregular cycles, really heavy periods, acne, um, like all of these different things like digestive issues can all be linked back to imbalances in our hormones. And they're just so important for like, just so much more than like our menstrual cycle. Um, And I, like I always say, like, it really isn't our menstrual cycle. It's our ovulation cycle. If we didn't ovulate, we wouldn't get our period to, Mm. or however many weeks later, it's like this cycle of events that, um, is, yeah, it's good for our whole body basically. Yeah. So a lot of women, when they're charting, they'll see these, these things that weren't, weren't really obvious before, like they're not ovulating and it's like, why aren't you ovulating? Let's look Mm -hmm. into see like what might be going on under the surface that's causing you to your body to, to not, feel safe to ovulate essentially um there's other things going on that like getting pregnant is at the bottom of your body's priority list Mm -hmm. that it's a really good like not warning system but it's just like a good way to like track your health and just like be aware of what's going on in your body Mm -hmm. um that if you weren't tracking it you wouldn't necessarily know otherwise um that yeah like I I struggled with irregular cycles, Mm -hmm. really long cycles. And for me, like it's, it's so linked back to stress. Right. And when I'm feeling like pressures in my life or really stressed or feeling like my needs aren't being met, feeling like I'm not having enough, um, like time for myself and the things that I love, my cycle is the first thing that will tell me because I start getting really delayed ovulation. Um, like the the whole cycle gets drawn out really long. And, and I've heard similar things from other women too. And 
when they're really stressed out or when they're in a situation that isn't um, serving them or that isn't like what they really want to be doing, their menstrual cycles are going to tell them basically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like a really good tool to um, not only conceive, but just like have some awareness of your body and like as a tool for self-care because you're really going to be seeing the the changes you implement in your life come through in your cycle. So if you're, if you have PCOS say, and you start making those lifestyle changes, you'll see in your cycle, things start to regulate. And that can be really cool to see. And it can be really helpful for a lot of women. Yeah. Yeah. I had had two uh, quick questions. Um, One, I was just curious if you have ever, uh, have any experience with the, some of the, uh, is it basil or basil? Um, I usually say basil. Okay. The basil body thermometers that are linked to the app, like Kendara has one called wink that you can buy. That's Bluetooth, like connected. Do you have any experience with those or can speak to? Yeah. So there are, I, I had the wink for a while. I, I don't know if they're they might be making it again. I'm not sure. They were like not making it for a while. Um, so I have used the Bluetooth, um, right now I use the temp drop, which syncs to my phone. Uh, and then I see the temperature there. Um, so it definitely, like if you're charting on an app, it can make things a lot easier. I don't think it's necessary to have a really fancy thermometer. Like I would say, work with an instructor, put the money into that over like buying a really fancy thermometer Um, because it can make your life easier, but, but it's not, it's not necessary. So say you start charting, you just use a $10 thermometer and you're like, wow, I think I'm going to use this for a long time. Then you might think like, oh, I'm going to invest in something that's, that's a little, has like, I don't know, some features that are nice, like Bluetooth or whatever. Uh, but to start, like, it's not super necessary. Um, it's kind of like a personal preference. But yeah, I've, I, yeah, I've tried the wink. Um, yeah, that was my lead into the next question, which is, do you have any like, how do you find an instructor? Instructor yes. one, like, is it something you just Google or like, do you have any resources for that? And then two, um, free or inexpensive resources for someone that might need, not be able to afford, like, yeah. hiring an instructor. So both those questions. Yeah. So most instructors work online. Um, You might be able to find one in your area just by searching on Google, like where you live, fertility awareness instructor. Um, But there are, I wonder if we can link like a list of instructors or something for people. Yeah. We can add that in the episode notes for sure. Or like, how did you, oh, I was just wondering how you found your Catholic uh, like course that you took. Yeah. So the Catholic course I took is only, um, where I live and I was just like referred to it through my doctor. So yeah, there are, there's mostly, so generally the Catholic natural family planning will be like local in person. Um, and then a lot, like there are some online as well, but most of like the secular, um, folks that I know are online and do like either one-to-one, uh, teaching or group courses. Um, and we can totally link that in the mm-hmm. in the episode notes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and there's like there's more and more instructors um and finding somebody who really aligns with your beliefs and just like is a person that you like uh that teaches in a style that you like is most important and then also looking for a method that um is is one that you want to learn. Um and um what was the other part of that? Uh, free or less expensive yes. resources so maybe like free resources or like maybe books or something like that yeah yeah so taking charge of your fertility is a really awesome resource you can learn to use fam just by reading that book so it will give you basically everything you need to know um but like everybody's learning style is different so some people might not really want to read through a book and learn it that way um so there are there's like a there's a facebook group um Fertility Awareness Method of Birth Control Facebook group, uh, which is basically volunteer only. So you can post your charts and get feedback that way. Oh, that's cool. Um, that's really cool. It, yeah. So like the caveat is that it is volunteer only. So it isn't <laughs> technically like working with an instructor. Like it's still at your own risk, right? Like you're not um, getting that type of support, but it can really help to like get you started, get into it. Um, 
so yeah, reading the book, there's like, if you just search like fertility awareness on Instagram, there's lots of like, like my Instagram, other people's Instagrams that are sharing information about fertility awareness, that once you start kind of following one person you'll start seeing that there's lots of like ways to go lots of different people who are sharing different things i wonder if there's um, any good youtube yeah. and i wonder if there's any good youtube instructors too like yeah um it's like it's tricky because i i wouldn't feel comfortable like going on youtube teaching people fan that way because okay. it it's like the so liability in my yeah. mind is like like i wouldn't feel comfortable being like hey here's everything you need to know, like, best of luck, goodbye, right? Sure. Like, I I think that's the reason why people don't go on YouTube to okay. teach it because they want to see people using it really effectively and really well and, right. like, learning it themselves through, like, a book, like, taking charge of your fertility. Okay. So that in that way, it's, like, that's, like, kind of the risky part of it okay. is, like, the, like, my, I, I, like, I'd be worried about people going off and, and not using it properly or whatever, but... Yeah. Um, yeah, reading the book, um, is definitely great. And then, yeah, there's lots of like articles online. If you just search fertility awareness method or like go to my website, I have lots of blog posts about it. Um, yeah, but just like starting with a thermometer, starting with an app or paper chart and just charting every day, you can start anytime. You don't need to wait till the first day of your cycle. Um, and then you can see like if you need more support or if you're okay, just reading the book and going that way just start now, like start tomorrow morning. If you have a thermometer, you can definitely do that. I have one more, more personal question. Can you do it mm -hmm. like while pregnant or after pregnant before you start menstruating? What would that tracking yeah, look like? That's a really, really good question. Cause I'm sure people are wondering about that. Um, so when, when, like after you give birth, basically you're in a really long pre ovulatory phase. So you're most likely going to ovulate. So you could potentially not have a period. Like you could get pregnant right after giving, like once your cycle comes back, not have a period and be pregnant again. Um, because okay. you'll ovulate before you get your next period. So you're never sure when that ovulation. Exactly. So what you're going to like in that phase is when I would like more strongly recommend working with an instructor because it can be, so like learning FAM without having postpartum added onto it is is like a learning curve. But learning FAM for the first time when you're postpartum is like a whole other like additional sure. learning curve because um, your cervical mucus patterns might be a little bit different. Um, you're basically, you're not looking for a temperature shift more so. You're just kind of waiting to see once your ovulation starts happening again. So the more you're breastfeeding, the more you're with your baby, yeah the more, the less likely it is for ovulation to return. So it's kind of yeah. like this funny mm. time, but it's definitely possible. People still use FAM in the postpartum. Um, and there are special rules for cervical mucus, like how many days after you see cervical mucus, you can have sex, that type of thing. So you're not as much looking for the shift because it might be like, it'll be months, right? You're not going to be tracking your temperature for like six, 12 sure. months. Right? So uh, you're just basing, basing it on cervical mucus. You can also do your cervical position. Uh, and other people track LH testing as well as like additional signs. Interesting. Yeah. I, I also yeah. found out that Planned Parenthood, just to throw out a resource there for um, new moms and breastfeeding moms, has a pretty... They I, I had never seen it laid out the rules for um, breastfeeding as birth control. Yes. And uh, Planned Parenthood really lays it out, like specifics where it's something along the lines of, don't quote me on this, I'm just telling you to go check out the Planned Parenthood website because it really was fascinating to me. Breastfeeding, not pumping every, it's like something every three to four hours during the day and then like every six hours at night or it's like something or like every four hours a night, something like that. But, mm -hmm. and then that's, it's something like upwards of 98% per, uh, percent effective. Yeah, it's super effective. And that was really fascinating because I thought yeah. it was just like you're breastfeeding, but then you get your period and what, but it was really interesting how it laid out specifically wow. like breastfeeding with the baby, not, not pumping at these certain, uh, hourly windows will prevent you from ovulating yeah, interesting. that's so crazy yeah Pretty fascinating yeah there are it's like it's called the lactational amenorrhea method the lam oh so like up to up to a certain amount of months postpartum you can rely only on that if you're like able to be home and with your baby yes uh, and breastfeeding on demand like it, it really relies on that but i 
I can't remember the exact amount of months, but it is a certain amount of months after you give birth that that will be very, very effective. After that point in time, it, it changes mm-hmm. and it's kind of more based on your own body. It's pretty cool though. Cause it's like your body protecting you from having <laughs> Irish twins <laughs> yeah, exactly. being even more overwhelmed. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. Well, Natalie, can you like give us some, I know that you teach, like you were saying, can you give us some ways that the other broads can potentially contact you or what you do. I know you do um, classes as well, correct? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So folks can find me at Fertility Awareness Project um, on Instagram. And then I also have a website. I run oh, yeah. a group fam course called Cycle Love. Um, and currently I'm running it. So I'm not taking folks for the group course until the middle of like maybe spring, summer. Um, So if people want to learn about kind of the four phases of their cycle, I have a, a, like a four week email course when you sign up for my newsletter that people can learn about those four phases. And then here when I'm running the next round of the course. Um, Yeah. So yeah, Fertility Awareness Project is on Instagram is pretty much where you'll find most of my stuff. Amazing. And we'll Great. link all that in the episode notes per usual. I think this is just so cool. And I so appreciate you coming on here, Natalie, because even aside from anyone necessarily who are like, Hey, I'm super happy with my current birth control method. Um, I, you know, I'm, I'm content, whatever. I feel like the idea, at least hearing you talk about this, the idea of just really keeping track of your cycle in general is just very empowering to Mm me. Um, I know personally when I was on birth control, the pill, it worked for me for a long time, but there was something that did make me feel a little bit out of body sometimes because I know my personal cycle was all over the place and I didn't bleed very often ever. And there was just this kind of like grasping at thin air a little bit. Like I didn't have that connection with my body. So the idea of, um, even if like you are on the pill or whatever, just, just keeping track of what your body is saying is just, I don't know. It's very exciting to me. Yeah. It makes me very excited too. Yeah. And it makes me excited for like partners to be able to learn more. Like you were saying about the workings of your body and, all that sort mm-hmm. of thing very cool so thank yeah. you so much thank you for reaching out this is so yeah. cool. so happy I'm to like, have is, you. is this the first broad that we've had on like official broad maybe <laughs> maybe it is. i feel like it might be <laughs> i think the, i think I the, really the therapist honored, might have been on oh the therapist we had a therapist well, i don't want to forget Doesn't you matter. sarah <laughs> don't, we'll never forget well, you sarah broad part two we so appreciate you, yeah. you it just feels on. really special to be able to come and chat with you guys this so is i appreciate you having me Oh my gosh, no, this means everything. It's really neat to have guests on, especially when they're listeners who are so inspiring because a lot of the conversations that have been sparked on the podcast for my personal life have Mm -hmm. really like truly changed the way I'm living my life and the choices that I make on day to day. And so that's so so cool. So cool to to be a part of that journey uh, with you all. And thank you so much, Natalie, for being a part of it. Thank you. you. Very neat. And uh, broads. Back in action next week yep. for uh, Peter's next episode. <laughs> oh, Lord. Tuesday. It's coming at you. <laughs> All right, Brads. Chat soon. Bye. Bye.